Here's a little experiment on natural oils used to deter ticks. We've got citronella, we've got cedarwood oil, and we've got tea tree. So natural alternatives to DEET chemical, which is usually recommended for uh, deterring insects. Uh, ticks included, so I've got a tick here. What I've done, I've put a single drop of each oil onto a bit of uh, tissue paper there. And we've got a little uh, triangle in the centre. I'm going to drop the tick into the centre. Um, and if he's going to move out of that area, he's going to have to walk over one of them. And let's see which one he chooses. So not a rigorous controlled experiment, but uh, it might give us some indication as to uh, the least preferable oil for ticks. Okay, off he goes over the cedar wood. So I've just put a single drop of each oil onto the paper, try and keep it as even as possible between the three. And he's definitely moving off right over the cedar wood oil. Okay, so I've repositioned the little fella and he's facing directly in front of the tea tree oil. Let's see what his next moves are. Seems to have paused. So this is a pre-camping experiment, trying to come up with a natural oil uh, to deter ticks, particularly from my daughter. And you can hear her in the background. So we're just after some natural alternative to DEET, which is recommended in a fairly high uh, percentage to deter ticks. So this particular fella is doing a bit of a U-turn away from the tea tree oil and it's headed in the direction of the citronella. So I've pointed him at the tea tree oil, he's done a bit of a U-turn and seems to be again heading over the cedarwood patch. There he goes, along the cedarwood oil. So interestingly he's moved right over that damp patch. And off he goes. So our tick here has been stalled in between citronella and tea tree for quite some time. Reticent to go over either of them. Yeah, I'll give you a little bit of a nip there, won't he? Nip. Can you see the tick? Yeah. Yeah? Tick. Tick. Yeah. There he is. Tick. Doesn't want to go forwards, doesn't want to go backwards. Okay, bit of movement now. Where's he headed off to? Shop. Shop? Bread. What's he getting in the shop? Bread. He's gone for some bread. Bread. I've given this tick a bit of a respite from the oils. Looks like he was getting a little bit kind of uh, wiped out by it. So put him back on in between tea tree and citron citronella. And I've uh, breathed on him a bit. So ticks are very good at picking up um, byproducts from mammals. So they, they kind of zone in on CO2 uric acid and heat which you find in mammals so that's kind of got him moving again and let's see if he makes a decision between citronella and tea tree or he's just kind of locked into position by them both
So we've got an adult tick here. I uh, just put my finger next to it uh, for size comparison. And I've got a nymph tick as well. And we'll just get a closer look at that. The nymph, uh, six legs, and much, much smaller. And even smaller than the size of a full stop on the page of a novel. So I'll stick my finger next to that for size comparison as well. Now, as people that spend a lot of time outdoors, we need to be really concerned about ticks. They can carry a bacteria called Borreliosis, which is responsible for a disease called Lyme disease, named after old Lyme in the States. And it's a disease that can lead to heart and neurological problems. In severe cases, it can lead to facial paralysis, paralysis of the limbs. And unfortunately, I've spoken to people who have suffered from Lyme disease, degenerative uh, disease, and it's put them in a wheelchair. So we need to be really careful about ticks. And the key really is, well, you realise you can't avoid ticks if you spend a lot of time outdoors. Um, they're transferred by sheep, they're transferred by deer and dogs and various mammals can't avoid them really so the key thing is to know the symptoms of Lyme disease and the symptoms can include this is some time after the bite it could be days or weeks after the bite uh, you can get a concentric uh, rash of rings around the bite site uh, referred to as EM almost looks like a, a bullseye on an archery target concentric red rings doesn't always occur however, so it's not a reliable indicator that you've contracted Lyme disease. Other symptoms are flu-like symptoms, aching joints, headaches and extreme tiredness. So really important if you do get a tick bite, get it out, get the tick out as soon as possible, look out for those symptoms, if you get those symptoms straight off to the doctor and tell them that you've been bitten by a tick and they'll test for that. I believe the treatment is a massive course of antibiotics to, uh, to knock that bacteria out of your system. To get the tick out, don't just pull it straight out. Don't cover it, cover it in olive oil or Vaseline. Don't try and burn it off. Its reaction to that kind of uh, action will be to, to throw up its stomach contents into your system in its stomach resides the bacteria that's responsible for Lyme disease. So the only thing that's really recommended, uh, certainly in the UK, uh, by BADA, which is the organisation which oversees uh, Lyme disease and Borreliosis, the only one they recommend to remove a tick is the Otom, a little tick hook, and like a little claw hammer. So you slide that under and twist it anti-clockwise. That's going to pull out the tick along with its mouth parts, which are barbed. So pulling it straight out without getting really close into the skin. You run the risk of breaking off either the head and the mouth parts or the mouth parts away from the head. And even if it's not carrying Lyme disease, um, that kind of uh, infection... Uh, gets really angry really quickly, you get scars and abscesses, so it leaves a bit of a mark behind if you don't get it out properly. So the only thing, as I say, recommended is the Oton tick removing. You'll get that from the pet shop. Yeah, and I use this a lot, used it a lot over the last couple of weeks, uh, very effective.